My name is Amy Simon, and I'm here today with Dr. Colin Van Zust, Dr. Bruce Wang, Dr. Elena Pishik, and Dr. Sri Nagala. And we're talking today about how to diagnose patients with acute hepatic porphyria, or AHP, which in some instances can take as long as 15 years to make a proper diagnosis. So this is a really hard diagnosis then for some people. They're having severe pain, but you can't find anything, as you mentioned, on any blood test sent. And on exam, it looks mm -hmm. surprisingly normal. So, so then what? When, when do you tell people, okay, now's the time, this is a rare disease, to think about this disease? Is it someone who keeps having abdominal pain? Is it someone who's having weakness? Does it depend on the patient when they're, when they're sent to you? What are some of your kind of, you know, these are kind of alarms that go off in my head? It's um, women yeah. um, during the reproductive years with um, a, a relatively prolonged period of abdominal pain that's otherwise unexplained. You know, you've ruled out the more typical things as they come into your office or through the emergency room. Um, uh, you know, it's not appendicitis, it's not gallstones, it's not, you know, not GERD. Some of these you can pick up on exams, on laboratory testing, on, on imaging. Um, and so it's really these patients who have unexplained abdominal pain that falls into this category that you should be thinking about even if this is their first presentation. And then certainly in patients who have had recurrent bouts of this, then your index of suspicion should be even higher. If you see the patient with abdom abdominal pain of a non-origin plus low sodium, plus not too many conditions have that combination. And uh, the second thing, uh, at least the patients with a neurological manifestation commonly have some elevation of uh, the liver transaminases. And uh, it's not very, uh, usually it's not very high, maybe mm -hmm. twofold maximum, mm -hmm. uh, seldom more, and usually everything else is normal. Dr. Van Zust, you're kind of on the front lines, given that you're the primary care, you may even see people in an emergency setting. What are some of the things that you're looking for? Because you may actually be the first person who's encountering them. What recommendations do you have for people in the emergency room, in a primary care office, that should make them start to wonder about this diagnosis? Once that index of suspicion is there, as Dr. Nagala alluded to, it's all about now arranging the right test. Yes. And, and normally, um, we all hear about during urinary porphyrin screen, where the ALA and PBG are what we call porphyrin precursors that don't show up on that screen. Sometimes you can do spot tests right there if you have the, the tests available. Um, and then really relying on the elevation of PBG mm -hmm. as that diagnostic tool for that first presentation because really there's no other conditions that have elevated PBG other than an acute hepatic porphyria. The level of elevation of LA PBG during acute porphyria attack is very high. It's not a subtle increase. Just getting a spot random urine, mm -hmm. you can check LA, you can check PBG, and you can also run urine porphyrins on that. So that should be more than enough, and we should not wait for the 24 hours. Things can spiral out of control very quickly. If it's an unknown diagnosis, we don't know they have porphyria, but we're suspecting it, you do as what you would normally do as a doctor. You treat the medical illnesses that are happening, you provide the supportive care, but the key is sending off that PBG and LA, ALA right away, mm. because that's gonna be your biochemical confirmation. And if the patient is becoming very sick and unwell, needing something like intensive care, these are the times where you pick up the phone and expedite mm. the, the testing. Um, because we know that as quickly as we can provide treatment, the better. We recommend uh, to test for uh, urine PBG every patient with uh, uh, acute porphyria if uh, in addition he or she has uh, pain, abdominal or back pain, or uh, dysautonomic features, uh, say uh, hypertension, sinus tachycardia, uh, severe obstipation, uh, or uh, nausea, uh, nausea vomiting. So would it be safe to say that all of you, when you're suspecting porphyria in a patient, acute hepatic porphyria, will check both ALA and PPG? Yeah, and standardly there are two tests that kind of come together as one. Typically when you ask for porphyrin precursors, mm -hmm. the lab will report both PBG and ALA, where those will not be reflected in 24-hour urine porphyrin collections mm -hmm. is not until they go through those enzymatic steps do they actually develop that porphyrin ring where they're classified as porphyrin molecules. 
now the trick is ordering the right tests at the right time. And they have to be done at the middle of an attack. They cannot be done when the patient is at steady state. After you have an elevation, it would be then that you would go on to do genetic testing. That's correct. I would do genetic testing to confirm the diagnosis in someone. It would be worth testing first degree family members. Um, and the minimum, being able to educate those family members about potential risk factors, triggers, and how to avoid them. And then also related to that is then communicating with their local physicians to establish care so that the patient has access to treatment should they have an acute attack in the future.